New York Times writer and best-selling author John Schwartz is out with his new book today. It is a guide to financial confidence. It's called This is the Year I Put My Financial Life in Order, and it chronicles his family's journey to responsible money management. Joining us right now uh, with more on the book and his takeaways from the writing is John Schwartz. I've known John for many, many years. He's a very smart and intelligent guy and very humorous writer, by the way. And so when you decided you were writing this book, and you were, I didn't even know you were doing this, and the fact that you're... A move in mystery. And, no, and mm -hmm. the fact that your, your own personal finances were, I don't want to say messed up, but not planned for, surprised me, actually, I, I, because I've known you and always thought that you had it all together, but then I realized that your story is not that different than many other people's story. That's what... That's what I hoped would, would come across, but we were a mess. We were a mess in a lot of ways, and I was one of those people who was afraid to look inside the Vanguard envelope. I just didn't want to deal with it. And so what, what happened? Just, and how did you decide you were doing this? And then, and then explain what happened, because okay. it's, it's not just a funny story. There's a lot of lessons in all of this. Well, I hope so. What I was trying to do was uh, tell the story of someone who hasn't been paying attention to his finances and then comes around. And the way that I did that is the way that I do everything as a reporter, which is if somebody's paying me to learn something, I learn it. That's the only way I ever do it. That's how I learned how to write about climate change. That's how I learned to write about the space program. And so uh, I assigned myself um, learning about finances, learning what I hadn't learned in the years that I was coming along, bumping along, okay, and getting on. into how, uh, just, but it, just Let's put it all on the table. How old are you now? I am now 61. Okay, and so, but how much non-planning was going on for how long? Okay, I'm 58 at the time the project begins. I don't have a will. Um, I've got three kids and I don't have a will, which is about as dumb as it gets. Uh, I had a 401k. I had no idea whether the 401k, the pension, any of my savings were enough to get us into retirement, a retirement that would either be comfortable or, you know, hamburger helper with cat food. We didn't know. And so, um, and there were other problems. And we had had bad periods where we lost an apartment. I don't mean I didn't know where to find it. I mean that we, we went into default on it in the 90s. Is that debt that caused that problem? It was, uh, it was moving to another city and having to try to sell the apartment. Couldn't sell it for reasons of New York crazy real estate. And then um, being left with a tenant who stopped paying and knew that he could get away with it. When you took stock at 58 and you looked at your, your, your net worth, did you still have debt at that age? We had um, cleared our credit card debt, which had always been too high, by selling our house and moving into a smaller house. So in fact, we were at a good breathing spot where we had cleared off the debt, cleared off the college debt by selling this house, and it was really a good moment to reassess, okay, going forward, where are we? because we weren't just you know, trying to keep our heads above water at that point. Selling the house made a big difference. Okay, so I have two questions. One is, there seemed, at, this point, at this age, did you feel like you were in triage mode? And what were the lessons at doing it now? And what would you have you told yourself had you been 30 to do? It was a good time to look. It would have been much better to look 20 years before. It would have been much better to be thinking about this instead of just sort of fretting about money and looking away, which is the way I dealt with it. And if I'd started earlier, I would have told myself to really pay attention to the stuff that I put into the 401k. I basically used a dartboard to choose my funds because I didn't know anything. And they turned out to be pretty good. They could have been better. And then I would have told myself to do exactly what I did, which is never open those envelopes again. <laughs> <laughs> to not look, just let it Hold you, Had you been selling down? Had you been moving stuff around? Had you been opening the envelopes and looking and then changing things? I had done nothing. I had, I had, I had left the envelopes closed, but I hadn't made very good choices in the first place. I didn't, under, I didn't really understand the value of a, of a, low, fund, of, of a low fee fund, for instance. The good news is you never panicked in any of the financial downturns and sold everything. No, I, those things, I was, I was intelligently lazy. I was avoiding things in a way that if it had been intentional would have been very smart. There's a trillion dollar industry that is trying to find you, that wants to provide <laughs> you financial advice. What happened? Why didn't you connect with a financial advisor? Well, when I 
got a financial advisor in my 40s and sat down with somebody to sort of uh, structure college funds and stuff, he sold me some instruments that were completely inappropriate for what we were trying to do. And we gave him a lot of fees. And we ended up cashing out the funds the first year my daughter was in college. And you know, so when we had advisors, that didn't go well. And uh, that's, that's, a, that's quite a indictment a, of, of that process. Because I, I work with financial advisors every day. And, and, and I now realize the industry's completely changed, I'd argue, 99% of them. Are fiduciaries and they're good. It's the one which is like which is industry. terrific, and 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 it would be great if people could automatically find people who are going to act in their best interests. Yeah. But it doesn't always happen. We didn't get look. We didn't get taken to the cleaners. We just didn't get what was right for us. So in the education process, should kids start learning in school, like before they go to college, about finances. Well, wouldn't that be nice? But it doesn't happen that way. We don't teach our kids uh, the rudiments of finance. I would love to see. Uh, a life skills course in college for for kids starting out uh, that says, you know, here's money, let's talk about it. And, uh, and here's some things, some basics that you should know. We're not doing that and, uh, and I'd love to see it happen. And look, I'm a liberal arts graduate. I'm, I love the idea of a general liberal arts education that teaches you how to learn. But there are some things that could be imparted at that right. good stage. John, I uh, want to thank you. Uh, the book, again, is called This Is The Year I Put My Financial Life In Order. Uh, I'm happy that you did. Uh, and it's a very good education uh, for a lot of people out there who uh, may be in your same spot. So thank you. Thank you, Andrew. Hey there. Thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.